welcome back to another episode of Lancey Poo Boot Camp. I will be your drill instructor, Lancey Poo. Today, I'll be doing something I've got a lot of requests for. Now, as we all know, we're trying to keep the FTB uh, boot camp moving on nice and flowy as if you just started FTB. I don't want to jump the gun and have someone who's been watching the show go, all right, I've got my pickaxe and my turtles. Now we're going to build a nuclear reactor. And they're sitting there with their, uh, with their, with their pickaxe and their, and their, and their turtle and go. I hate my life. We don't want that. We want to continue going where people know what's going on. So let's continue. Anyway, um, I got a lot of I got a lot of questions, guys. A lot of people asking me, sending in suggestions, and they're like, Lance, can we please learn how to do some energy stuff? Well, we can talk about yoga, or uh, we can talk about chi, we can talk about Buddhism and all that, or we can talk about Minecraft energy. So, uh, what we're going to have to do here, guys, is we're going to have to cut this into two different episodes. One, episode one, will be about creating the machines that are going to be required to get us our lava power. Pretty straightforward. This is what we're going to be building today, right here. This is my patented system of awesomeness. It's not patented. Everybody does it. Anyway, if you look at it, you're going to notice some things that you're familiar with. Our pulverizer, our chest, our hopper, all that. The other things is Mr. Induction Smelter. That's his cousin. This is his cousin's kids. Magma Crucible and Liquid Transposer. They go together. We'll get more details later. Underneath, Energy Conduit and Magmatic Engine with a lever. That was the tutorial, guys. Have a great night. I'm just kidding. Why don't we teach you how to make this crap now? Here we go. Guess what? You guys are going to love it. Look what I did. Ah, look at this. I made a flow chart. Technically, I put a bunch of signs down, and then Amy came and looked at it, and she said, oh, it's a flow chart. I was like, it's a what? She's like, a flow chart. It shows what, where things, I was like, oh, it's like Kung Fu. <laughs> anyway, so a couple of things we're going to need for this uh, this this one today, guys. Uh, of course, you'll need your uh, we'll need the pulverizer set up from the last tutorial. If you don't use my version, you, then you're probably okay to like you'll 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 get the general idea of the tutorial. You don't need this exact setup. You just need something similar. Basically, what it really comes down to is you need an engine. Anyway, after you've got your like little setup like this, you're also gonna need a furnace, a crafting table, and this chest over here, I call adventuring supplies. There you go, you got everything you need. I need to be very clear on something. These four buckets right here are meant for lava. You need to get four buckets of lava at some point during your expedition and travels. Don't worry about that bucket, it's just there for my benefit. I'll show you what it's for later. So. At some point, whether it's when you're in the nether, which you will have to go to the nether for uh, for part of this episode, you fill these four buckets up with lava. Don't forget it. All right, there you guys go. This is basically what we're gonna need, guys. Uh, it's very, very cheap stuff. It is very, very cheap stuff. I'm just gonna give you guys a second to look at this. Um, I know that the setup looked intimidating. It's really not. That's really all we need right there. That's all you're gonna need, guys. Super easy. Now I'm going to break this down a little bit, guys. I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to pull this out. Okay. Everything else in there is pretty, pretty common. You all know where to get this stuff. All right, guys. Now this is called cyan wool. There's a couple ways to get this option. One, the, the easiest way. If you know what a minium shard or minium stone is, take a white piece of wool, put it in a minium stone and go until you get this color success. The other option, get a regular white piece of wool, get a lapis and a piece of cactus green, or a piece of cactus green, the dye, and then just mix them together in a crafting table. You'll get a blue dye and then just dye the wool that color. Next thing you're gonna need is nether bricks, guys. Uh, there's a couple ways to get this. Easiest method is go to the nether. Hopefully there's a nether fortress nearby. Mine two bricks, come on home. The other option is take one piece of soul sand two pieces of netherrack put them in an induction smelter you get a nether brick of course you would need two soul sand and six netherrack but we don't need to go into that it's super simple guys uh and some of you are probably saying hey i don't have an induction smelter you will in a little while 
Okay, last but not least, guys. Some of you are probably wondering, how do I get Envar? This is how you get it. First option, easiest one to happen upon, is simply mine it. It spawns between level 6 and 16, and it's not uncommon. It might not be easy to find. It might not be the easiest metal in the world to find, but it's not that bad. It's not uncommon. Okay, maybe if you put it on a Pokemon scale, it's uncommon. All right? Honest to God, I just... No more Pokemon references. Anyway, throw that Ferrosaur into your Pulverizer that we made on the last episode. Boom! You're going to get Ferrosaur times two. Also, byproduct, you got a chance of getting Shiny Metal. Yeah! The other way of getting Ferros Metal is if you've been getting large quantities of iron. If you're pulverizing your iron, you're getting a 10% chance of producing Ferros Metal as a byproduct. So if you've literally like just done like six stacks of iron, chances are you've got Ferros Metal. GG, that's all you got to do. So, that's the two options for getting Ferrous Metal. What do I do after I've got my Ferrous Metal? That's a good question. So, after uh, you've got your Ferrous or your Ferrous in uh, dust form, it's really simple. All you're going to do is you're going to take two iron dust and put a piece of Ferrous dust under it. That's it. Two iron dust plus one Ferrous dust gives you three Envar blend. Do this five times. Win game. There you go. I just taught you how to make Envar. You sexy beast. All right. So now that we have uh, know how to make the couple of uncommon resources that we needed, let's go on and show you guys what we're going to do next. Now, on my flow chart that I presented here, because I'm a flow master. Oh, with the blow my whistle, baby. Whistle, baby. Copyright infringement going down. Anyway, after you've done that, you're going to see my flow chart leads to machine refined items. We don't need to go there. We haven't built the machines yet. And machine parts. I did something very special for you guys here. From this chest, take the resources and build exactly what I put here. Not too shabby, right? First off, build one piston. Easy enough. Next off, build an Omni wrench. After that, three machine frames. Not too shabby. After that, Envar gear. Easy enough. Redstone transmit coil. Boom. Lastly, a redstone reception coil. Times three. I'll give you a second to take all that in. Also, one of the things you're going to notice, guys, is I put these in basically a crafting, uh, in a crafter's box worth of, uh, worth of space I, I broke these all down to as if you were looking at a crafting bench so that if you don't know the patterns let's say your nei is screwed up or something all you've got to do go to a chest or go to your crafting bench put these patterns in you'll get the items i have here for you not too shabby all right what i want you to do starting right now start following my instructions right now take your two obsidian out of this chest take that two obsidian and throw it in that pulverizer and cut it on we need that in dust form one thing that you're going to notice is you have a lot of leftover materials and that's okay what i want you to do right now is go back to your original resources and make three buckets you're going to need those but they wouldn't fit in the chest so go on and make three buckets also and after you've completed all of this in this chest and got three buckets we're going to move on to the next level of the flow chart the machines themselves as you can see i broke the machines into four grids i thought this was the best way to show you how to make it i put these in priority order guys one this pattern is for your induction smelter you're gonna need it it's the most important item we're gonna make today second your liquid transposer thirdly your magmatic or sorry your magma crucible these two items go hand in hand one is useless without the other lastly we're going to build our magmatic engine seems legit right not too hard not too shabby everybody keeping up like i said guys there are a lot of ways to do things this is simply my way of doing it and my way of getting the geothermal some people have different routes shortcuts whatever i don't want to confuse anybody who's new to ftb i want to walk you through holding your hand saying baby don't let go i'll lead you through all the bull here 
after that is done guys I want you to go over to your end product oh yeah all right in your end product at this point you should have an induction smelter built a magma crucible a liquid transposer and a magmatic engine you should have all these things built don't worry about everything else in this chest it's not important for now all right guys after we've grabbed those uh these after we've grabbed our magmatic engines our liquid transposer magma crucible and our induction furnace i want you're gonna notice and some of you are probably like wow i got a lot of crap left over that's okay we're gonna show you what to do with all your crap yeah crap all right the first thing i want you to do guys go over to your pulverizer get your pulverized obsidian out now we're gonna go and we're gonna jump into the machine refined items Upon opening this, guys, you're going to see a couple things on my left and a couple things on my right. The right side, you don't have those. The left side, this should be the remaining resources that you have right here. This should be all that you have left in your inventory, guys. What are these for? Well, this is where the machine refined items come into play. Let's close that for a moment. And now what I want you to do is I want you to go break your pulverizer. You don't need it anymore. Your pulverizer is done for this episode, guys. Break it, stick it over in the corner somewhere, and call it useless crap. Boom. You know what? I don't like that either. I'm going to break him too. Boom. Broke his chest. Everything. Just dead everywhere. There you go. You should be left with this. Now what I want you to do is just put your induction furnace on, your induction smelter on top of it. Now, let's go back to our machine refined items. Again, this should be the only items that you have right here. These items on this side should be all that you possess at this point. What we're going to do now is I'm going to teach you what to make. I want you to take your lead ingot and your two obsidian, go to your induction smelter, and smelt it. I want you to do the same thing with your gold and silver don't forget to cut it on and smelt it now what this is going to do is it is going to produce a couple of byproducts is what we want you're going to get from these two the lead and obsidian you're going to get two hardened glass from the silver and gold you're going to get four electrium what is this going to get us well when you take these two things and put them together that creates an energy conduit empty of course now all you should have in your inventory right now is these three items plus your tools if you chose to have tools if you have lava whatever this should be what we're looking at what we're going to do now is we're going to go and bust our induction furnace we're done with our induction furnace for now we're done don't need it he's done for the episode let's throw him up on a wall of stupid there you go now what I want you to do is I want you to bust all this wood out from under here. I want all the wood going from our uh, from our um, pulverizer original setup. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to put your lever back beside it and cut it on. Why? Because when I put that on it, I don't want it to cut on. The next thing I want you to do is right click it, put all of your redstone inside of it. I want you to go to your config over here and I want you to cut all of these off. I want everything off. Just originally cut everything off. What you're going to do now is go take your liquid transposer and put it beside it. I want you to cut all of these off. doesn't matter how you've set this up. It's probably different than mine. Cut them all off. I want no configs on. Don't have anything configed. The next thing you're going to do, guys, is you're going to go on and you're going to cut this on. It's going to start to, uh, it's going to start to smelt. Sorry, I should say it's going to start to melt your redstone. Next thing you're going to do, just chunk those in there for now. Just chunk your energy conduits in the top of your liquid transposer. Now, guys, it's a waiting game. But there is something we can do in the meantime. One thing that we're going to have to do is widen the floor for the next phase. Take that second water bucket that I gave you earlier and put it right there in the corner. Take a water, another set of water. Like I said, if you're close to your uh, endless water supply, grab some water, put it over there in that corner. What is this for? It'll make sense in a moment. Now's the waiting game, guys. This is the most uh, aggravating part of the whole setup. We have to wait for these 15 to melt into liquid. It really is annoying. Uh, pretty much, I've been sitting, I don't. I should have timed it for you, but it takes a little while if this thing isn't built up. Now, guys, what we need to do is we need to take this 400 MB and transport it to this one and put the 400 MB inside our liquid transposer. 
not very hard. What you got to do, guys, you know what side your uh, liquid transposer is on. Let, on. For us, it's the right side. So on the far right, I'm going to click twice. And you're going to change it to orange. Okay? Next, you're going to go to your liquid transposer. It's connected on the left side. You're going to turn it to blue. There you go. It just transferred. Now, this is very, very important. Unless you want to repeat this step, do not break your liquid transposer. What you are going to do is you're going to break your magma crucible because we're done with that. You're going to break your steam engine and your aqua accumulator. Okay, remember that. Do not break your liquid transposer. Everything else that I've showed you thus far can be broken and switched. This phase cannot be skipped. This won't take nearly as long, guys. All we're going to do is hook the same setup under our liquid transposer. It's going to just blast these out really quickly. Super, super easy. It's not complicated at all. One thing you can do while all this is going is uh, just throw that extra stuff on the wall um, and just wait. All we've got to do is wait for this to be finished, guys, and we're pretty much wrapping it up. And there we go, guys. It's finishing up right there. Now we have our energy conduits. We're done with this setup, guys. The steam engine and the, uh, the aqua accumulator, we're all done. Uh, all of it's done. We are complete. We've got everything that we needed. Let's go over here and hook it up, shall we? Now, I do recommend... Uh, the little accessories like keeping your hopper from earlier, keeping your uh, chest from your pulverizer. Those things will come in handy. After we have uh, tore everything down, as long as you listened at the start, you should have four buckets of lava. Did you listen? Or who's sitting there like, do it? Oh, Hopefully that's not you. Let's put it together. After you went and got your Omni wrench, first thing you're gonna wanna do is uh, place down your magmatic engine. Then you're going to put your energy conduits directly beside your magmatic engine, okay? So there you go. You should have eight energy conduits. Now, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to hit your engine with a wrench. Boom. That should turn it, make it face into the energy conduit, all right? Next, this will show as blue. I want you to hit it. Don't hold shift or it'll break it. If you hold shift, it breaks the pipe, all right? Little tip for the future. When dealing with uh, energy conduits, liquid ducts, um, machines uh, like this, Holding down shift will break them, okay? Little piece of information some of you might find useful. So anyway, this is gonna be blue. Simply right click, it's gonna turn it to yellow. That tells us what? That it's gonna output power into the energy conduit. When dealing with energy conduits, guys, it's not gonna overheat. Don't This engine isn't gonna overheat, okay? Next thing I want you to do, put your lever behind it. Now let's set all the engines that we made up today. Set them up. So the way that we want to do this is we want to put our pulverizer one block away from our magmatic engine. Why is this? Let me show you why. If we place our pulverizer on top of the first energy conduit, it's now linked up with our engine. What does that mean? Well, whenever I hit it, it goes off and on. That's bad. Why is this bad? Because the pulverizer is trying to output energy not receive it and you can't flip the switch what does that mean it means either the engine is not going to be putting energy into the energy conduit or the pulverizer won't be receiving energy so that's why we don't do that now you have a couple of options the first thing you always want your pulverizer to be close to your magmatic engine why because if you're like me you're just going to throw a chest right there to make it look good Although there is a secondary option put your chest on this side and put your induction furnace there Go into the config of all these make sure your pulverizers config looks like this. Okay The blue needs to be blue so that when we hook the hopper up It'll actually receive the items remember when placing a hopper on top of something guys hold down shift and right click that will allow you to place So that's hooked up to output into this so now the same thing we're gonna do the same thing with the induction furnace guys we're going to cut everything off, including the top on this window, and turn this to orange. Whichever side is facing the chest, you want it to be orange. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to hook up our magma crucible and our liquid transposer. Same basic principle as we did earlier. Cut all this crap off. The only thing that should be going is your magma crucible should empty out into your liquid transposer. Like so. There you go. Remember, blue means it receives item blue means it's a receiving end orange means it's outputting so now you should have something that looks like that 
the next thing you're gonna do those four lava buckets you're gonna go put them inside of that uh that that engine and then you're gonna cut it off so long as the engine is not running it will not go down we put a lot of lava in there this should not run out anytime soon remember this is only temporary those four buckets are only meant to get us to a sustainable lava system we simply need this setup to get us there a tip be sure to cut off any machines you're not using i leave my pulverizer on all the time so let's let this build up our mjs as you can see your mjs build up extremely faster than with the steam engine go on and let your pulverizer cap out so let this run for a while i left some room down here on this end guys so you can put a rolling machine a sawmill there's a lot of mj stuff we can connect to this system that's pretty much all she wrote that's how you set it up that's what i do there are different ways of doing things there are many i'm not trying to go into each little detail and all of that all i'm trying to do is help someone who doesn't really understand ftb or perhaps just doesn't understand how geothermal energy works with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching. I know it was a little bit different because it was just so much we had to get in here for the next episode, but hopefully no one got lost along the way. Have a great night, guys. If you're new to the channel, please like, share, subscribe if you actually enjoyed it. If you thought the channel was poopy, you probably shouldn't do any of that. For all you people who did enjoy it, though, welcome to the crew. Welcome to the family. And I will catch you on the next video.